What's up, YouTube? Uh, today, I'm going to make some classical mandolin picks, uh, Roman style plectrums. Um, the material that I'm using is Encudo Precision. If you can see that. Um, it's a 240 millimeter by 100 millimeter by 10 millimeter thick piece of Galilith or casein. Uh, basically it's a some kind of weird old school milk plastic stuff. Um, whatever that means. That's what it said online. But anyway, it's supposed to be great for picks and we're going to make some today. I want to show you how to make a template. Super easy. And I got some big grinders and different stuff. I'm going to use uh, some saws but totally can do it all with hand tools. You don't need anything really that crazy. Some sandpaper file some kind of a saw would be beneficial but let's get to it see what happens all right so the first thing you're going to need is a ruler and a piece of cardstock um nothing crazy i'm going to do this in millimeters just because the original way that i was shown how to do this there was a video online um i'll try to post a link to that also um basically it's the method that I will show. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a 70 millimeter line and this is going to be our template. This is going to be the overall size. So we're going to make 70 millimeters and mark the edges. Okay. Second piece of thing you're going to need just a regular old little compass and we're going to set that 70 millimeters as well and it should be pretty close so and I guess the other thing we could really do is just measure if you want once you've got your line so you can see where we are and we're going to put a couple of arcs on this piece of paper and that's going to give us the overall shape here so what we're going to do is we're going to pull an arc this way and we're going to pull an arc that way we're going to switch sides, go to our other point, and we're going to pull an arc, and another arc, and then where these intersections are, we're going to pull another set of arcs, and that's going to connect our points. Alright, and just like that, we have our nice, uh, our nice plectrum shape for the, the Roman style plectrums. And then we'll just give that a quick cut out. Uh, normal people would probably use scissors, but I do lots of leather work, so this will be fine. Just like that, we've got our basic 70 millimeter by approximately 19 millimeter wide plectrum. So, just really close to 19, which was kind of the goal. Alright, I'm going to put a little bit of spray adhesive on the back of that, and then we'll be able to transfer, we'll be able to stick this right to our piece of tortoise shell and we'll have a nice template to sand down to. All right, so we've got our template. It's got our line on it, shows what our top was. That doesn't really matter. So, and I just use this stuff, this uh, 3M Super 77 adhesive, use it for all kinds of stuff. It's fantastic. I'm just gonna put a little shot on there. Just so I got something on there. You don't need a whole lot. Let that dry for a second. Kind of pop it off. And then here, I've got a piece I've already made a few out of. I'm just going to stick that right on there. 
And now I have a couple options. I can use a pencil to go around it, a pen if you've got a silver marker or something. Uh, but this material, uh, if you scratch it, you can see uh, it's got some lines in here. They're, uh, you know, this stuff marks pretty easily. You, know, you put a couple of little scratches on it, you can go right around your shapes um, if you don't want to sand right to this or whatever. But I'm going to take this over to my little bandsaw and chop it out. And you can, like I said, you could totally do this with a, a little coping saw or even a hacksaw blade if, if that's what you've got. I mean, just a couple dollars, not a big deal. Stuff cuts pretty easy, but it's super hard for plastic. I mean, it's, it's really crazy. Uh, fantastic for picks. So let's get over to the bandsaw and see what we get. All right, guys. So I'm over here at my my little Ryobi. It's like a 10 inch Home Depot job. Um, all you need is this is even overkill for that, but it's it's a little bit quicker. So it's pretty loud, pretty noisy, pretty shaky. I'm just going to cut a, a rough square out of this, um, just to separate this piece from my big block. Um, I may end up editing it down. We'll see. Just our basic shape, chopped out. Um, hard stuff. So here's our block. Uh, now the piece I have is 10 millimeters thick. That is clearly way more than you're gonna need for making a pick. Uh, right two, maybe three, maybe one and a half millimeters, something like that is probably gonna be fine. I think this stuff comes in like three millimeter and thick six millimeter thicknesses um, I just happened to come across a couple of pieces that were 10 mil thick and I thought maybe I could get three across so what I've done is I've got this marking gauge uh, nothing super crazy um, but it's got little blades on the top and you can adjust the thickness and how far they set out and I've got them set up to three millimeters hopefully you can see that there what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to run it right along my edges here. And I'm going to go from the outside in three millimeters both ways. All right. And that's going to give me a line that I can cut to. And I'm just scoring this on there so I can see it. Uh, so there's three millimeters and then I'll go to the bottom. Same thing. I'll just do three millimeters across here. couple lines there I'll turn that around I'm gonna go three millimeters this isn't gonna be quite three because I want to hit this whatever a piece of cardstock thickness is a little bit less but it's still three millimeters is bigger than I want I want some space to be able to sand it down all right so now I've got a line on both sides that I can cut to and if I stay on the inside of those lines, my outside pieces will be at least three millimeters thick. The inside will be a little bit less, but 10 millimeters, three millimeters, three millimeters, that's six, so I should have four on the inside. My saw blade has a thickness and you lose that, so really my four millimeters on the inside, it's gonna be a little bit less than that. Uh, twice the thickness of my saw blade, actually. So if you're doing, if you got a six millimeter piece, cut that right in half, it'll be perfect, ready to get sanded down. I thought I was doing myself a favor, but maybe not. We'll see. But there you got it. And I am going to 
cut these off, cut them apart on my bandsaw, same way as I cut the block out. Uh, now I'm going to try to slice pieces of this off right along those lines. I'm staying to the inside, so all my extra waste, the kerf they call it, uh, that'll be removed from the inner piece, which is a little bit fatter than the top pieces. All right, so I've got a little block set up here for my spacing, and I've got my blade, probably not going to see that, but I've got it to where it's three millimeters off this block. Now when I run this through, uh, it should leave me my three millimeters right there in the center. And looking at my mark, I might want to come over just a touch. Tiny bit. Something like that. And let me find a push block. I should be alright with a pencil for this. And we'll see if we can't cut a slice off of here. Yeah, I've got one slice here and you can see I stayed just inside the line I want to turn this around and run it back through the other way and that way I know I've I've used my outside face as a reference on both ends so we should get three pretty much the same size pieces And there we go. Looks pretty good to me. Pretty decent cut. I will take it. Alright, so we're here at the belt sander now. Um, basically, I've got my little shape on here uh, so I know just where to grind to. Uh, this is overkill, you don't need to do this. I mean, normally. For most of you guys, you're not going to be making a whole pile of these things. Um, you can just cut this out with your hacksaw or, or whatever, Dremel even, um, and grind everything down. Because uh, I'm doing a bunch of them, I'm on a 2x72. I mean, you can make knives, you can make whatever on this thing. But I'm just going to clean the belt up. Uh, this is pretty aggressive. I'm just trying to get it done quickly. This stuff smells like bone. Uh, when you cut and grind on it so definitely wear a respirator dust mask something like that um, it's kind of gross Alright, so just like that, I've got my basic shape, and I can peel this off and stick it on my other two, and I should have three that are super, super close to each other. This is why you don't want to use too much of that spray adhesive. Just like that, fire up another one.
There you go. There's three. So these guys are still pretty thick for a pick. <clears throat> uh, normally what you could do is grab some, I don't know, probably some 100 grit sandpaper, 80 grit, 120 grit, something like that. Something pretty coarse. Uh, use some spray adhesive, put it on a board or a flat table, any kind of flat surface. Uh, and then you would basically take this down, just sand on it to the thickness that you would want. Um, and I'll be doing some of that on some of the finer grits. But in the interest of actually getting a bunch of them done, I'm going to do the majority of that on the grinder here. I'm just going to thin them out. I'm going to get my tapers kind of moving in. I'm not going to worry about the edge beveling and all that stuff yet. I'm just going to try to get the thickness down to something manageable for now. Um, so I'll let you see kind of what that looks like in its rough shape. So now you can see my edges, my center is still pretty thick. Um, and that's just kind of personal preference. There's no reason to thin that out other than, and I know why you would thin that out, just comfort, I guess. But I'm starting to taper down the edges, get those a little bit thinner. And this stuff is still, I mean, it's got a tiny bit of flex in it, but it's pretty stiff. you got to pull it pretty hard. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that shape. Um, feels just a little bit of a rock on the side there so it feels like it's pretty straight uh, but since it's a little bit fatter as it goes around when you put it on its faces uh, you're going to get just a little bit of a seesaw um, and that's kind of what it does when it's in your hand when you're playing anyway it, you want it to sort of go back and forth hold it nice and loose uh, but I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and get the other two tapered down. And we'll be right back. Alright, so I switched out a, my sanding belts to a like a fabric, fiber sort of a belt. It's like a scotch guard type of thing. Um, basically, I'm just going to use that now that I've got them all shaped. Uh, I'm just going to try to get all the grind marks and all the saw marks and, and any other imperfections out uh, just to get them pretty smooth, round off my sides pretty much. And once that's done, we're going to switch over to some sandpaper, uh, maybe some files. Um, and we're going to get some, some beveled edges on here just to assist with uh, gliding over the strings. And then we'll polish them up and they're, they're basically done. So...
All right, guys, so I got these looking pretty good. Um, I got a piece of 400 grit sandpaper, just kind of spray adhesive onto a piece of melamine. Uh, that's just a nice flat thing, and I'm just going to basically make sure these things are good and flat. You know, get all the crazy sanded lines and stuff. And most of you guys will probably have started somewhere closer to this point uh, using sandpaper instead of you know, big grinders and stuff. But I'm just going to make sure my bevels are nice and nice and cool. Um, whole lot of sanding. And just because you have it on the block doesn't mean you have to only use it on the block. You know, I mean, this is just sanding. Make sure all your edges are nice and rounded off. You're looking for comfortable, first of all. And then once it's comfortable, then you can make it more easily played with some beveling and I think there's a lot of different preferences as far as uh, like how pointy do you make them you know um, and that's definitely a personal preference I don't care for the super super pointy picks I like to round them off a little bit but everyone's a little different um, I mean, ideally, if you're making it for yourself, you start off pointy and then keep rounding it off until it meets your play style. Um, if you're buying one of these, I would just take a nail file. Um, even if you're not particularly handy, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can take a nail file and just slowly work on the edge, you know. I mean, you can sand these things down. So instead of having like crazy, crazy pointy, you can start to kind of round it down um, and if you have the speed bevel sort of look, be this surface and then you flip it over that same corner uh, that sort of most folks seem to keep their picks angled down a little bit so if you have that bevel as it glides across the string it's just kind of a little bit of a helper as opposed to just kind of round um, but I'll usually taper the, f the forward facing left corner um, no matter how it's oriented, and it'll all get the same bevel there, and it seems to it seems to work pretty well. Again, this is just some 400 grit sandpaper. Um, you guys are probably going to start off like 120 or 180. 100 grit, something like that, something coarse, whatever. It depends on how much material you got to remove. If you start off with a real thick piece and you know you don't have a file or something, you can always just go to any of the big box stores, grab a coarse piece of sandpaper, put it on a block, and just go for it. You know, get it down to the thickness that you want. Um, finer you go, the better it'll polish up once you start uh, uh, getting into the real fine grits. It'll turn off pretty nice, or, or shine up pretty good. Again, I'm going to fill these up just a bit. And that is still pretty pointy. Um, but it's way less pointy, 
you know, should glide over the strings pretty well. Uh, you compare these to like your standard Dunlop mandolin pick or a blue chip or something like that. I mean, these, these are way more pointy than your basic triangle picks. Um, you just want to get everything symmetrical, nice, nice and even. And again, the big thing is comfort. You don't want any hot spots. Some guys, you know, play for hours and hours and hours, and you know, you get a hot spot on your finger after 20 minutes. Um, not going to be something people want to play with. And I'm not going to make you guys sit through all this either. Let me get this 400 done, get my shaping down. And We'll step back in with something a little bit finer. See what I consider good enough to stop. Propeller or something almost. So you've got these two flat surfaces. You've got one bevel on the bottom going this way, and then another matching bevel on the top going that way. So when you offer them to the strings, you get a, even when your pick is angled, you get kind of a rounded face to sort of ride off of, and that's what we're going for. And I'm just going to keep going, a little finer grip, try to get the rest of these, some of the larger scratches out from the 400 grip. And then I'll switch over to probably some 2000 grip and then do a little bit of polishing on them, see if we can't get a, a, a decent shine. Not too worried about the faces, there. I might even put some uh, checking on there just for some grip. Uh, but you really want the sides to be nice and shiny because that's going to give you a really clean sound, no, no kind of raspiness. Alright, let's see how they turn out. <clears throat> Alright, so I got them pretty much sanded out, flattened out. Uh, now I'm just going over with some 2000 and just making sure all my bevel areas in particular are nice and scratch free visually at least. Um, let me polish these up. I look great. <clears throat> Alright, so these things are sanded up as much as I need to sand them. Uh, at least as far as I feel, they need to be sanded. Uh, they're nice and smooth everywhere. I'm happy with the bevels. Um, they're still nice and, and grippy. You can kind of hear. You know, it's, it's a really cool material. Uh, when it gets warm, it actually gets a little bit malleable so I mean there's a little bit of flex in them uh, and after time with heat when you're holding them they may get a little bit of a curve so it's probably a good idea to kind of you know change position with of the pick a little bit here and there um, maybe not ends but at least you know rotate it in your hand every so often but the last thing I want to do was uh, just kind of try to get some polish on these edges and I'm just going to do that with a Dremel. I've got a little bit of a the garbage rouge that comes with the, the little buffing kits and we'll see how they turn out. Not real fast. But that's it guys I mean I don't feel that they need to be super polished all the way around I mean you certainly could keep going but I think a little bit of a a little bit of texture in there um, is really just just helps you hold on but 
I think um, I think these will play nice, nice and smooth on the striking surfaces. So again, the edges are a little one side's a little different than the other. You know, a little bit rounder, a little bit pointier, or vice versa. So um, there you go. I don't know how long that took, but I got three pretty quick. Well, I got two and a half. I need to work this one out and figure out what's going on there. But two and a half, I'll take it. Thanks for watching. See ya.